In this video, we're going to go over some NoSQL vocabulary that's going to set us up for the rest of the course. And if you are familiar with SQL databases, we'll be doing a little comparing and contrasting, comparing which term best maps up to a term in the other database. Now, it's not a perfect one to one map, but as you'll see, the general principles are the same. It's really just the details that are different. To get started, the term database is used in both. In SQL, I might have a database for my to-do app, and the same would be true in NoSQL. Both of those databases are going to contain various sets of information. If it's a weather app, I might have a set of users, a set of locations, and a set of temperatures. Now that data stored inside of your database, this is a little different. Inside of SQL, we have a table-like structure. Inside of NoSQL, we have more of an array-like structure. Now the table is called a table and the array-like structure is called a collection. So if I have a weather app, I might have a table of users and a table of temperatures. Inside of NoSQL, that would be a collection of users and a collection of temperatures. Now let's take that table of users. What do you call an individual user? In SQL, you could call that user a row or a record. That's what I have highlighted in red right here. In NoSQL, an individual user in the user's collection would be called a document. That's gonna start right here at that curly brace and it's gonna end at the end of my JSON-like object. Here we have various properties, just like we have various columns over here. Name Andrew, name Andrew. Now let's talk about those individual properties. Inside of SQL, you might have called this a column. We have a email column, a name column, so on and so forth. And this is because SQL is schema based. So the name column is going to exist for all records. It's going to be of a specific type, and it can pretty much be guaranteed to be there for anything in this table. Inside of NoSQL, it's not the same. Your documents in a collection, they don't all need to have the same properties. The properties could be completely different, although there's not usually a lot of value in that unless you're doing some data mining, or they could be the same, which is what we're going to be doing. We want to store some data like users and all users are going to have the same properties. Those are going to be called fields inside of NoSQL. Here we have a name field, email field. I might also call them properties since it's an object like syntax. Either way though, these are pretty much the big differences between SQL and NoSQL in terms of vocabulary. So we're going to create a database for the to-do app. We're going to have a collection of users. We'll have individual user documents and those documents will have fields. Enough of this vocab. Let's go ahead and actually start using MongoDB.